Last week, schools in France sent 67 girls back home for wearing an abaya. It's a long rope that covers the body with a headscarf, as is worn by some Muslim women. Now, this was as per a decision on the uniform policy in schools, similar to how Karnataka witnessed in 2022 February. There is a chance, however, you may not have heard about the France diktat, not seen much outrage, and if at all, you would have come across regular reportage on it. Because it happened in France, a developed country in Europe. A nation's decision on the school uniform as it should be, for everyone to appear equal. But when one school in India, in Karnataka's Udupi, decided on a similar pattern, asking six girls to leave when they insisted on wearing the headscarf in school, I'm sure you remember the outrage. The global reportage labeling India as some sort of fascism going toward Hindu Rashtra and turning Islamophobic. All that despite the fact that in many schools, specifically minority educational institutions, headscarf continues to be permitted in India. But based on one school controversy, a massive debate had erupted and spread like wildfire. Debate in a democracy is understandable, but compare the criticism against India over six girls sent back to the lack of outrage on 67 girls sent home as an internal matter. So let us today look at how two incidents played out. First, France has a strict rule in public schools, which are government-run schools, stating no ostentatious symbols that have a clear religious meaning will be allowed, which means ban includes on large Christian cross, Jewish kippahs and Muslim headscarves. The law was introduced in 2004 March. The issue has been dominant theme in French politics. When defying the ban recently on the Muslim robe, nearly 300 girls showed up wearing an abaya. Education Minister Gabriel Attal told this to the local media. Most girls agreed to change out of the robe inside the classroom. But 67 school girls refused and were sent home. Objections were raised. Matter reached France's highest court that upheld this ban and stated, and I quote it here, the ban on wearing these garments does not constitute a serious and manifestly illegal infringement of a fundamental freedom. Also remember, unlike other religious symbols, an abaya or a burqa have been part of heated discussions and debates across the world. And raising a question often if the Western world encourages this patriarchal practice, especially at a time when protests continue in Iran by women who have to mandatorily wear the hijab. And if there is a refusal or a protest, they are then met even with murders by the state, like we saw in the case of Masa Amini and many others. Critics have long argued that the religious covering is seen as an attempt to confine a woman into a certain stereotype, hide her identity by covering even the face, and all this decided as per male gaze. It begs the question, should this be normalized even among school children? How did this issue erupt in India? It started from one school and soon turned into a full-blown spectacle both for the local politicians and activists, and the much-awaited masala for the foreign media, some literally claiming falsely that this was some sort of a rebellious fight for survival of Muslim women in a Hindu India. Remember, India has not banned the hijab or the burqa in public places, simply was inside some classrooms in part of the country. France, instead, has not restricted this ban just to schools. In 2011, France became the first country to ban the burqa covering face, even in public places, after the restriction started in 2004. In March 2021, Switzerland joined the line of European countries to ban the burqa. In 2019, it was also Netherlands imposing a partial ban on the burqa on public transportation. By April 2021, Sri Lanka's cabinet approved the ban on burqa following the harrowing Easter's attack citing a threat to national security with the hidden identity. Belgium, Austria, Bulgaria have also banned the full-face veil, citing national security risk because identity is kept discreet, and some European countries also citing the issue of oppression of women. A reminder, India did none of this, and yet had to face extreme criticism. All those nations still called liberal, while the most inappropriate objectionable names were used for India. France, in fact, pushed it further. When the left confronted their government over this issue, President Emmanuel Macron defended the controversial measure and did not mince words to say, and I quote him here, there was a minority in France who hijacked a religion and challenged the republic and secularism, leading to the worst consequences. This, remember, is a president, though considered one from the liberal circles. He cited even past incidents to not let fundamentalists take over. The murder three years ago, of teacher Samuel Patti for showing caricatures of the Prophet Muhammad during a civics education class. Macron called that a terrorist attack against the teacher. 
Remember Charlie Hebdo republishing the caricatures of the Prophet, which in response saw a series of terror attacks, mass shootings that shook France in January 2015, claiming the life of 17 people, including 11 journalists and security personnel at the Paris offices of the Charlie Hebdo, a satirical magazine. The office was the target of the attack when two men of Algerian ethnicity armed with assault rifles entered into the magazine office and selectively killed people. There was also a bomb attack in 2011, though a French court eventually ruled in favor of Charlie Hebdo, stating it was only against fundamentalists and not against the community. Interestingly, France has also been one of the few countries to welcome a massive number of refugees and migrants from diverse nations which were undergoing conflict, thereby showing its humane side often. As per UNHCR, France welcomes around 3,000 refugees each year, providing people with an opportunity to start a new life. As a nation, however, it knows where to draw the line. France is any day more clear, more strict when it comes to enforcing their form of secularism. But France also attempts to keep state and religion separate. Compare this to India. Our schools celebrate all kinds of festivals from Diwali to Christmas, constant depiction of all religious practices respected in schools during prayers or occasional events or in general public life. Religion is an intrinsic part of Indian culture and we like to flaunt it too. And even though a Hindu majority nation, other religions have complete freedom to follow and express their faith. But look at the difference in how foreign media had reported on France's actions and on the actions of India. And I want to take you through each one here. Let me now show you how the foreign media reported on the actions by France to actions in India. Turkey's TRT World on France said, French schools turn away dozens of Muslim girls for wearing an abaya. But for India, they said, unacceptable, how is this not apartheid against Muslims? Qatari channel Al Jazeera on France said, schools send dozens of Muslim girls back home. But on India, it said, very specifically, hijab bans in India where communalism and patriarchy intersect. The Hindutva project to save Muslim women. Targeted harassment, Muslim girls denounce the hijab ban. Never discussing the patriarchy that is burqa too. Washington Post on France published this report which appears neutral. France's Macron supports experimenting with uniforms in some schools amid the debate over the ban on robes. But when it came on India, WAPO through its column said, the world continues to ignore the radicalization of India, referring to only radicalization done by Hindus. Asking also in another column, USA to oppose India for Islamophobia. So you see how narrative was selectively spread about India. As I conclude, France or Karnataka, the fact remains girls' education must be a priority and must be encouraged. Girls need to be in school. They need to be cultivated to become independent in their thinking and in life. But for that, the government and the society cannot be at loggerheads. They need to come on the same table and know precisely what will help these children. India continues to do that, welcomes all faith. It is time India is acknowledged for doing that. Thank you for watching. So we will see what the final decision by France will be. Meanwhile, it continues to be steadfast on its ban on burqa or abaya in the schools for now. Stay tuned. Coming up next, what's happening in India today by Jessica Goyal. Thanks to G20, the capital is all spruced up. But at what cost? This was India's first ever G20 and we spent a whopping rupees 4100 crores. Union Minister Minakshi Lekhi on X posted a breakdown of this budget and mentioned how the central government allocated rupees 700 crore for the construction, repair and maintenance for the roads in the capital. These were used by TWD and MCD. Approximately rupees 60 crore was allocated to NDMC, 18 to DDA, 26 to Ministry of Road and Surface Transport, 45 crores to PWD, 5 crores to MCD and 0.75 crore to MEA and 16 crore to the Forest Department. Further, the Delhi Police was given around 340 crores to maintain law and order and Rs 3600 crores to the ITPO. The ITPO complex is the convention centre in Bharat Mandapam where the summit's main events were held. All in all, it comes to Rs 4100 crores of taxpayers' money. This is four times higher than the Rs 990 crore that was allocated for G20 in the budget for 2023-24. Other direct costs related to the event being held in Delhi have not been revealed so far. Let's compare this to the cost incurred by other countries during the G20 presidency. 
In 2022, G20 summit in Bali was budgeted at almost 674 billion Indonesian rupiah, which is over 364 crores. The cost of 2018 G20 summit in Argentina was 112 million dollars. That's about rupees 931 crores. In 2017, Germany spent about rupees 640 crores on hosting the meeting in Hamburg. Chinese authorities have refused to reveal the exact cost of G20 summit in 2016. The Economist reported that there was a rumor that the city was spending over 1.9 lakh crores. The 2014 G20 summit held in Brisbane, Australia, cost Australian 500 million dollars. That's over 2600 crores. Russia spent over rupees 170 crore in 2013 and France around 712 crores in 2011. And Canada spent 715 million Canadian dollars, which is approximately 4300 crores on the G20 Toronto meeting in 2010. This is almost close to the amount that India spent on their G20 summit. For more informative videos like this, keep watching India Today Newsmo.